Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to yet another Repop with me. Now, I was going to do more things in this video that I'm kind of ultimately going to end up doing today. Basically, long story short, I have some lecker stuff to do and I have some normal soil stuff to do, but I totally haven't prepared the soil past a tiny little bowl. So I'm not going to do that today, I'm going to wait. So you will get the soil stuff on the next Repop. Basically, I have over there, I have a Calathea White Star that kind of needs repotting. I'm going to put it into a Lechuza pot, but I need more soil. I'm not going to convert that one to lecker. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So that was going to happen today. It's not happening. Other than that, we have a couple of things to do today. Let me just go over it before, as usual, we start to chat together. So what have I got today? First thing that I've got for you guys is, I mentioned this in the last video, this is a type of Lechuza pot. I think it's Eula. The range Eula. This works by placing a nursery pot in here and inserting like a wick up through the bottom to self water. When I had this in the last video, I didn't have anything to place in here. So today I do, and I will go into that in a minute because there's some tea there, but I'm going to be trying that out today so I can obviously give you this review. Now, I thought that would be the only thing I would be trying out. However, as you know, I've been testing out these lovely Lechuza classical planters. I've got cocoa fiber all over them. And on my last video, I mentioned the fact that these these guys don't have any cage inside to remove. And a few of you suggested to me to buy these. Now, I can't remember what the name of these are. I will place the name in the description. On here, it just says classical premium, but I feel like I searched for something else to get these on Amazon. The difference, and I will obviously open these and show you, but the difference between these and the previous ones I have been using is, I think they're a little bit more expensive, but they do have the cage in the middle. They're also gloss. I don't think they come in a mat, but I'm kind of okay with that, if I'm honest. I'm not too mad at that. So I have one here today to test, and I also I'm going to use an existing one because, let me put this down. So in my Eula pot, I'm going to put this ghost. I'm going to replace the pot. I'm going to switch it with another really shitty philodendron. I'm going to switch the pots around because I still don't have a pot, but I managed to find one I can use. So I'm going to put the ghost in the Eula pot to see how that does, because it's got good root system anyway. In the glossy brand new premium uh, Lechuza pot, I'm going to put my philodendron dark lord in that, and I'm going to be using Lekka. In the not so good pot, I'm going to be taking, they're off frame at the minute, but I will grab them, the collection of Monstera cuttings for my mum. And I'm going to start off the beautiful elbow, right? But I've been thinking about this. So these two pots here are the same capacity, right? But neither one really is probably going to be the Monstera's forever home, okay? So for now, I feel like the Dark Lord could sit in this one and be more permanent so it doesn't have to get moved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plant the Monstera up. I'm going to put a pole in here with some lecker, and I'm going to attach the Monstera to the pole and grow it over the year. Now, I didn't want to put the Monstera into the better pot because I know that by the end of the year, my mum's probably going to need a bigger pot by the time I give it to her as a gift, right? Also, she might not want a white pot. She might want a different one. So I'm going to grow the Monstera on the pole. I'm going to tape it with that green tape. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. Here it is. And we're going to basically get the Monstera stuck to that pole. I've got a probably taller pole than we need, but it's for that reason. But it means when I repot it, I can just take the Monstera out of the lecker and I'm not really going to be met with any resistance. And then I can just transplant it into a new housing. So it's not going to be super, you know, invasive. I could use substrate for this, but as the, you know, the, the cuttings have been in lecker anyway, why change it, right? Why not just use lecker? So that's why I'm going to use the shitter pot for my mums because it's going to outgrow this. And I'm going to ask her what color pot she wants anyway. And I will put my Dark Lord in this one to test it. And I have a feeling I'm going to to like it already. I can already see the quality. There is a quality difference between this new one with the cage and then the other one, but we'll see. And I think that might be it. I think we can get started. Let me put on my gloves. I'll take my ring off. I've had a lot of questions this week, more than usual, actually, I think. Um, maybe just because I'm filming this on a Sunday rather than a Monday. Maybe that's why maybe more of you were around to give me your questions. I don't know. I've been asked how many Hoyer I'm up to because I know a few of you have seen my Instagram stories of late and uh, I'm I think I think I'm up to 10 Hoya. It's not it's not 10 uh, that was pre-recorded we're at 17 now yeah yeah yep for someone that isn't or hasn't previously been into Hoya that's quite a lot. 
considering like, I don't know, nine of them are in one order. So, you know what? It might be 11. I, it could be 11. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a real problem. My obsession with Hoya at the moment is anything like splashed and silver. I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling that, but I need to stay away from the internet. I really do. Hey, me again. Yeah, you fucking do. You do. Let's do the ghost first, and I have something here you might want to see. So, this here is the Florida ghost I'm going to be using in the Eula pot. Let's get the Eula pot back out, because I'll be assembling this for the first time. Not that you really have to do anything to assemble it, but this fits around a pot a little bit better, right? This is just the insert. I'll move this out in case I do something bad to it. So I only have one plant left that is in a pot that would go inside this planter and it happens to go inside it very well. I happen to not like the plant that I have in this plant pot and I'm going to swap with the ghost. I'm not going to get rid of the plant yet because I feel like a few people might want to ask more questions or might want to see it more but I'm gonna swap it out using some normal substrate I've got here. And that plant, if you can't tell what it is, is Philodendron Pink Congo. What? It's just a, it's a reverted Pink Congo. Yeah, I'll try and hold this up in front of me just so you can actually see what's going on. There you go. Pink Congo, totally reverted. You can see on this leaf here, the reversion is well underway. You know what it is? I see people on Instagram still saying, you know, there's debate as to whether these things revert. And I have no idea why people still think it's a debate. Clearly they revert. If anybody wanted proof that they revert, here it is right here. Here is the original Pink Congo that I did. Uh, I featured in the Pink Congo Dish the Dirt video, the scam. It was pre-recorded. I don't know what else to I don't know what else to do but laugh while I'm editing this. If this was pre-recorded, guys, I don't know what else to say. Holy shit! Ah, oh, on with the video. So this is her. Um, I I have abused it. Obviously, for some reason, whenever I water, I get to the bottom of the watering can, and this one's always the odd one out. So I just walk away and leave it. So it, it doesn't have to look quite as shit as what it does, but why the fuck would I care, right? So a few words on this plant. I'll, I'll tell you the thing that I, I've only just recently noticed about this plant when I get repotting it. So first let's get it out the pot, just have a little bit of a look and see how it's, you know, developed. Cause I'm assuming the roots aren't pink. I mean, who knows? Although that looks a little bit pink. Let's find out, shall we? This is in the original pot that I bought it from. That's a very important thing I'd like to note. I have not, change the substrate or anything in the past. We're not at 12 months yet, but we're kind of approaching it. So I'm, I'm sure this was potted around about 12 months ago. Um, I haven't changed anything. I'm not gonna overly disturb roots because I, 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 I couldn't give a shit, guys. I really couldn't. But there she is. Now then, obviously, no question, it's reverted. I noticed that the super pink stems, again, you probably can't see this, the super pink stems when the leaves are all pink, they've kind of gone down to like a gentle blush color, I think. The back of the leaves look kind of average, I think. Everything's just kind of faded away. I can see pink in the roots of this plant. Um, it's not gonna be obvious and I can't really show it up to the camera, but it's got pink roots. Um, but that's not the shitty thing about this plant. I mean, obviously it reverted, right? We knew it was gonna revert. Of course we did. Well, most of us did. 95% of us probably knew it was gonna revert. This isn't the first Pink Congo to revert, by the way. For anybody that hasn't been following this, they've, they've all reverted. It's a thing. But the fucking shitty thing that I didn't notice until, I think it, was, it wasn't recently, it was a little while ago, because I did post about this on Instagram, but this shitty thing that I did not notice about this, and I absolutely would have mentioned this in my Congo video, is as follows. This seller, this UK seller that sold this Congo, full well knowing, of course, that this was a fake. I say this because the seller that sold me this Congo was the same seller that admitted to knowing it was fake in the chat logs on that video. This seller sold me this Congo and uh, I think they had a habit at one point of naming their plants on their listings, I would say. I mean, it's a little bit weird, I guess, but if that's your flair, that's your style, that's fine. But it's more the name that they gave this guy, knowing full well, remember, who he was and what he was about. I, he was fake as shit, right? Would you like to see the name that the seller gave this plant? Seriously, it's a who. Can you see that? 
that, for anyone that can't read that or by pure chance that that, you know, hasn't focused, the name written under here is Jekyll. And I can only assume that that has to do with the famous characters Jekyll and Hyde. Now, I won't bother going into it. If you're curious, look it up. If you don't want to look it up, I'll write like a TLDR down on the screen right now, explaining basically what the thing with Jekyll and Hyde is. But it's, it's just, it's just fucking gross, to be honest. You knew that this plant was masquerading as something else, that it was fake. And you named it that. I mean, you've got balls, I'll give you that. Like, that takes some balls to do that. Either that or maybe you weren't aware of the connotation, I don't know. That takes some real fucking balls, so congratulations. I guess you got some kahunas on you, but that's that anyway. That's kind of the only update I need to give you on the Congo, other than yes, it's reverted. I mean, if, do we need to see any more? I don't know. I'll plant it and then I'll give you another quick look because I'm going to swap the substrate now with this guy who is not fake. <laughs> For anybody that doesn't know, Florida ghosts are not chemically induced or anything like that to give them their color. So what you get with the Florida ghost is leaves that emerge white and they fade down to green. Who any, anyone that doesn't, you know, watch my channel and doesn't know that because they happen to be one of my favorite plants. Oh, yay, good roots. Right, so this ghost is going into this pot. Let's give him some a little bit extra chunk in the bottom because I'm going to be putting it into this self-watering planter. That's probably a little bit too much in there. I think that's fine like that. It's, it's not going to take really more than a hot minute to repot this because it's not even that long it's been in this substrate, I wouldn't say. Like it didn't need repotting, it's more just to get it in the round pot to test this other pot. Right, so that's the ghost repotted there. Take a little bit of chunk out the top just to help with the soil level. So that is the Phil Denver Florida ghost unfortunately potted into the Jekyll pot. So I'll just get this potted up and I'll give you one last tour of the plant. Um, I'm annoyed I'm even wasting substrate on this, but whatever. It fucking amazes me how you can call the plant that. It honestly does. It honestly does. Like I've seen some fucked up shit in my time from sellers. You've got to admire the boldness of it really in a weird way. You've got to admire them. You know what? You don't, you're not even getting the chunky bits out of my soil because I pay good money for those and they're really useful and I'm running low. So you can have all the chunk taken out of yours because you don't fucking need it. There we go. Right, so this ugly ass plant has gone back in this pot just to keep it alive. I only really probably need to keep it alive if you guys want more updates on it, photographs of it, anything else, and then I'm probably just gonna whiz it. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Right, one more time. I'll try because I'm very far away from the camera just to show you the level of reversion there. You see that? That's in the middle of reverting. All the leaves on the top are growing in green because the chemical's wearing off now. So these leaves here now are all the plant is ever going to produce. That's it. Game over. And the cool thing about this scam was the people that were doing this to the plants knew full well it was going to last months. And by that point, you're never going to want to refund, are you? You know what I'm saying? So for anybody that was aware of this plant and how long it would take to wear off, they're pretty sweet because obviously by the time it does wear off, you've fucking long gone for refunds and everything else. So really it was the perfect scam because also it was pink, right? And everyone was crazy about Philodendron Pink Princess. This could have been a fucking disaster if this took off. Mm. Right, we'll put him out of the way. So I wanted to give you that update anyway. I did have to use the pot from it. As I say, it's the only circular pot I've got, but at the same time... So, let's unwrap this pot and move on from the Pink Congo. I'm going to take this wrapping off real quick. So the thing I will immediately tell you about this is it does feel kind of bulky. Um, you could argue it doesn't need to be this bulky, but we'll see. I do feel like... I'm going to say this as I thought about what I was going to put in this, and you've got to only put certain things in this plant pot to make it look good. I noticed very quickly that you couldn't put something slim like, say, the Queen Anthurium in this because, oh my god, because it just looks a bit bottom heavy, it looks a bit silly. But if you've got a plant that grows wider, either something like this ghost is right now, or even a hanging pot, this is very nice. And for me, it's very nice because this will help, like, kind of push out the sides of your hanging plant and make it look a little bit bigger. So for me, I thought that was kind of cool. Obviously, I haven't tested it on hanging plants. I did kind of sit a plant in just to see how it would look. I actually tried a Hoyer in it. But I decided to not go with the Hoyer because it's self-watering and I didn't feel like Hoyers needed that much water. But I do feel like it would work well. I can't get this out. How am I supposed to pull this up? You do pull this up, right? I can't get that up. Maybe if I put the thing in, the thingy, I can pull it up. Oh, I'm going to break this so bad. Oh, 
You didn't say shit. You did not say shit. Right, so floaty thing, straw in the bottom. Okay, and then we put that through here up to the top that now has pen on it where I tried to stick a pen in to get this thing out. Then, then stick the self-watering pot in the top. That's that assembled, right. So in the bottom of the pot, obviously I've had plants being tested out in it, so it's a little bit dirty in there. In the bottom of the pot, that's the water reservoir at the bottom, and then it just kind of, everything sits. So all you've got to do, I think, is the following. This little wick here goes into a hole, oh, this is going to go everywhere, a hole in the bottom of the plant pot, and you basically just insert it, and, well, does what it says on the tin, it becomes a wick and it will disperse water into your plant, I believe. So it sits outside of your pot like that. I have soil all over my legs and you just kind of sit it in and this will, you know, dunk in the water and you should be able to just water your plant. Obviously there's the water meter like normal and that's that. So if I sit that in there, you'll see why I wanted to use this pot and that is because it fits perfectly in the top. Obviously I will give you my full thoughts on this. Um, but for now, there's nothing more to be done there. That's it, you just water it to the fill line, same as usual, and then you leave it. I guess it could be good to find out if a plant would suit self-watering, maybe, because it's so temporary. I don't know. Now, let's do, let's do the Dark Lord first, and then I'll go into my mum's Monstera, I think. And I will take a question just as soon as I've sorted out what the hell is going on with this. I think I might open both pots and then store the liquor in this pot while I, you know, sort out the planting into the new pot. So I'm going to take all the wrapping off this one. This is not the pot I'm going to use on my Dark Lord. But I am going to use it to store the lecker that comes out of this pot because the Dark Lord has already been in lecker for... Ooh, maybe a month, I think. I, I can't remember. Did, when did I haul that? Was it a month ago? Because I had it in the house, you know, days before I hauled it, so... I'm not sure. Okay, so for anybody that hasn't seen, this is my very drippy, very wet Philodendron Dark Lord. She's absolutely unbelievable. She's very big, she's beautiful. She's got a new leaf here that's coming in super red. It's just, it's not quite unfilled yet, so it's a bit random. Um, I'm gonna pour this into here and then I'll take a question just because this is gonna be a little bit loud. Right, let's see the roots on this guy. Really, really bright red roots, by the way, awesome. I do have a couple of new ones. It's so hard to spin this thing around. Definitely at the base there, where the, where it's closest to the bottom of the pot, they've got some new roots, so that's really nice. Someone uh, sent me, it wasn't a question, but they were more messaging me to tell me that, what was it? Do you know that the price of chocos have gone right up since you spoke about them? And I didn't know that, but to be honest, can we please, can we please talk about the price of Maranta since last week's, well, it won't be last week's video now. I'm filming this three days after you've seen that video, but the video where I did the plant haul where the Maranta featured, right? Which I'll give you an update on that in a minute. But honestly, in like 24 hours, this is Sunday now, that went out on Friday, I bought two Maranta yesterday, and I think I paid four times the price for some of these Maranta. And I can see this because you can check eBay's history on what things used to sell for. Oh my God. Oh my God, what happened? I thought Maranta were pretty like, not uncool, but just like, no, they weren't, they weren't sought after, if you know what I mean. So I was like, oh shit, okay. Uh, and that was just after the video, you know, on Friday. So I have noticed stuff like that. That was loud, sorry. I have noticed stuff like that, but I, I don't notice every time it happens. I, I'm aware that a lot of it does happen. Like I'm pretty sure that big uh, aroids are in at the minute. Um, wonder why. But yeah, I, I don't necessarily follow it, but I, I guess it's just what happens. I don't think it's me specifically. I think it's just, you know, people say something or maybe it looks very flattering on camera and people are like, oh shit, yeah, I'd love to get one of them, you know, and it just goes from there. It's cool. It's cool that plants like that can have their moment, right? I'm not talking about the choco here. I'm really talking about the Maranta, but it's cool that plants like that can have their moment um, if they haven't had their moment. Because I don't feel like Maranta have ever really had a moment. Sorry, this is very loud. Oh my God. So yeah, I got a couple more Maranta yesterday and you will see them soon. You'll see them in my next haul, basically. Um, oh yes, I wanted to update you on the black Maranta that I did haul. I don't know when you'll see this. This might be two, three weeks ago now. I don't know. I'm having to film this in advance. So sorry if I seem like I'm not up with the times or I'm mentioning something that happened ages ago. That's why. So yeah, that black Maranta that I hauled and I thought was a black Maranta, apparently it is not. It has not been identified yet. 
so it's it's an unnamed maranta that's got no id so although it looks you know like it would be a black maranta it's not so i wanted to just let you know that in case you look at that thinking that's a black maranta it's not it is unbelievably similar don't get me wrong but it is not a black maranta that i know of according to what people are saying on facebook basically i don't have to read on how to assemble this because i haven't got a clue let me just get a degree in construction reading but where does that go I don't understand what you do. What do you do? What do you do? Do you just sit like that? Is that it? Oh, it just slides in. That seems like it should click in. They haven't written click like they did on the other model. I, I can see a little hole that it's supposed to go in. Oh, it goes down over. Uh, I get it now, okay. Oh God, you'd think I would know how to build these by now. Honestly, you really would, but I just fucking don't, you know? Right, what else have we got on questions? If I can actually read them through my plants, because there's a lot. Someone asked me if I have a fitness regime. And I mean, thanks. If it was intended to be a compliment anyway, maybe it wasn't, maybe it really wasn't. But uh, I, I am the most unhealthiest person on this planet, let me tell you. I do not have a fitness regime. I do not exercise, though I should. I don't even have time. I have a gym membership that I'm paying for that I don't fucking use. I'm not healthy in the slightest. Not, not at all. My diet is terrible. I eat junk food or I'll eat mainly meat. I don't really like vegetables. Uh, someone has to bully me into eating vegetables as if I was a child. Generally, it's, it's not good. I would love to be fitter. It's just, it's, it sounds like an excuse, but it's not that easy for me because I really am that busy. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't say that lightly. It's just really difficult to get anything done because I work so long. Like the past, at least the past two weeks, I've been doing basically 16 hour days. I've been getting up around about seven. I'll definitely be at work, you know, by nine. I've been stopping work at about 12 o'clock at night, having got up at seven, you know, it's, it's, it's rough. Um, so I'm working a lot. So in doing all of that, of course, I have no time to go to the gym. Do you know what I mean? Why won't this just stick on? If the point comes where I move closer to my office, then I probably will try much harder and I'll probably be able to do more because I'll have more time in the day. A lot of my time is taken up with traveling. I'm quite slim. I'm not going to deny that, but it's all genetics. It's not because, you know, I diet in any way or I work out. I just have the worst diet. And the only reason my skin is okay is because I spend stupid amounts of money on skincare, quite frankly. Which is another thing, give me one minute, because I need to introduce this really nasty ass pole. I'll introduce the other one as well, actually, before I continue with that. So I have this pole from my mom that is about a meter long, and it's a really nice, you know, smooth one, like kind of like my other ones. And then I have this really nasty one that I bought. I'm gonna use the nasty one for me, and I'm gonna give her the really nice one. It's also taller as well, which is what I need. So a couple of people have asked about the whole skincare thing and to do a video on my channel. Honestly, I, I will, I really will. I've just got a lot on at the minute, trust me. I will get to it, I promise. It is on my list of videos to make on that second channel, along with the makeup tutorial for my red eye makeup that I do, that everyone loves. I'm gonna be doing that as well. So they are coming, there's just no time frame for it. As I said, when I started that second channel, which the link is in my description, I think, for that. I, I don't have an upload schedule. Like it's hard enough to keep going with this channel. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And a shop. So I will be doing it. I just, I can't give you a definitive, you know, timeline. I don't have any choice but to put the pole there and the watering meter here because that's kind of where the little recess is for the pole, the bottom, which I don't think is for a pole. I could be very wrong. I don't think that reservoir is designed for a pole. I think it's designed to allow water into the pot. But anyway, this is gonna be very difficult. So, <sighs> Give me a minute. Look at those beautiful pink roots. Oh, very nice. Right, I'm gonna have to gently, gently, get this into the into the pot, like so. I think that's that's probably good, right? And somehow, kids, I'm gonna have to get the liquor out of here, and I think I'm gonna have to spoon it out. So again, this is gonna be very noisy, but it's liquor. I can't do much about it. Oh, it looks nice on camera though, doesn't it? Oof, yeah, boy. You know, I quite like lecker because if you have substrate that goes over the top of some of your petioles, like near the top, it's not really gonna harm them. Um, I like that compared to soil because obviously it would harm them. It's just something I'm noticing about lecker that I like. I think that is the lecker done. I'm gonna leave that down there. 
because it'll get used anyway. So the cool thing about this pot is it sits inside the inner pot and it's in like this. It's in kind of like a cage. Let me see if I can twist the plant so you can see. This here is like a cage, right? So normally, let me twist it. There we go. Look at it from the back. Normally this sits as the inner rim inside the plant pot, as long as, you know, liquor isn't all over it. And you can lift it up to pull it out of the pot like this. This would allow you to do the things that you can't really do with the other pot, which is to rinse all the lecker through and everything else. So I actually probably am gonna end up recommending these more than the other ones. If you want like a one-stop shop for all of your solutions. This is already better from what I can see than the classical that I have been using. So if I'd known about this sooner, I would have bought this model, I'm pretty sure. But the other ones are still working fine. Don't get me wrong. Right, now that's in there. Let's just get it in the outer pot. And I don't mind, I mentioned this on the last video, but I really don't mind putting it so that you can see the logo on the outer pot. That doesn't really bother me. Where is the logo? There it is. You know what it is? I don't think that's very straight. I don't think my moss pole is straight. So I'm gonna tape this a little bit to the stem. I don't think I need too much. So I'm just gonna use some of this amazing green tape. If you haven't seen this tape before, it should be linked in my description. If it's not, pester me and I will link it. Don't wanna do it too harshly. I, I, you know what it is? I only think he needs one. I don't really wanna give him more than that. There he is. Let's see if I can kind of show it like that. Can you see him there? Kind of. That's probably the best I can do because he's so big. Let me pop him down. That didn't take long at all. And as I say, I don't think I need to attach him very much yet. We'll see how it goes, but I can always just put some more of this tape on if I need to. Right, so that's him done. Now the fun bit. A couple of people asked me what plant YouTubers I watch. And honestly, I'm scared to name people because I feel like I'm gonna forget loads of people. I think off the top of my head, you've got Adam. So that's not dude. His videos are fantastic. Really high production quality as well. Love Adam to bits. I think he's great. Who else do I watch? I watch Nicole from My Clean Leaves as well. She's fantastic. Nikki from Plants, Pots and Whatnots. She's wonderful as well. Huge collection Nikki has. I think it's it's actually admirable how big her collection is. It's ridiculous. Uh, oh, I don't want I don't want to miss anybody out. There are the three Pams. Definitely the three Pams. There's a lot of Pams in the plant community. But I watch Pamela P, who is a beautiful black lady, and she. Her recent videos have been very entertaining because she's been actually reacting to a lot of the things that have been going on with racism in the plant community. Hi, editing Kaylee jumping in here really quickly because you know what, I've weighed in on everything else. So I'm noticing that I'm smiling here in this footage when I talk about Pamela P. I'm smiling because I remember at that moment I was remembering some of her reactions to some of the things that she was discussing in her videos. And while obviously, yes, racism is a serious topic, I was kind of in admiration at the way that she dealt with a lot of these things, which she dealt with them in a way that was really just classy, elegant. She still had a sense of humor about her and I just thought that was fantastic. So just to make it super clear, I'm not making fun of anything to do with, you know, what I'm saying. I just wanted to jump in really quickly in case any of that, you know, the message gets twisted there because I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm very hypersensitive about it and I don't want that to be taken the wrong way. I'm smiling because I remember some of the really cool things she was saying and it did make me chuckle. And if you haven't seen the videos, I do suggest that you go and watch them. I think I still have a video I need to watch. I haven't watched the Newt video yet. So I need to go and watch that. I've just been so busy. But yeah, I'm not laughing at Pam in the slightest. I'm merely remembering some of her reactions and I think she's great. Uh, back to the video. Obviously I'll link all of these people down below, by the way. And this isn't like an official promo or anything, but obviously, you know, anybody I talk about, I'll link, I'll link below. She is fantastic, love her, lovely lady. There is Pam from Pam's Plenty Things, who originally started the Plenty Kindness Project. Hi Pam, how are you doing? Uh, been watching her a lot recently as well. She's possibly the nicest woman on the planet. I challenge you to find me a nicer person than Pam. I don't think it can be done. And the other Pam, the third Pam, is Pam that is very close to my heart because she's, she's so similar to me. I love this woman. Whenever you watch her, I, I know her more personally and the way she comes off on videos is 
you know, who she is. And I, I just fucking love that about her. And that is It's Pamela on YouTube. There are obviously others, but I can't remember them, you know, all of them right now. I'm aware that the YouTubers I watch, I will say this now straight up, I'm aware that most of the YouTubers I watch are not people of color. So if you know any black YouTubers, please feel free to link them below. And I would love to check them out because I, I'm struggling to find them on YouTube and I don't want that to be taken the wrong way. The YouTube, you know, plant tuber community is predominantly white. So if you've got any wonderful, you know, people of color accounts, uh, sorry, channels to follow, let me know down below and I will absolutely go and check them out. So please do. Plus share it with the rest of the world because we are still aiming to lift up black people and give them the stage that they have deserved for so long. So if you know anybody, please do leave them down below. As I said, I've probably forgotten to mention a few people. Please don't take it personally. I'm doing this kind of off the top of my head. Right, before I go any further, I will just grab, this is gonna be really difficult. Oh my God, okay. Okay, the plan here is as follows. Right, so I could have created better cuttings than this. These are the ones I've got. I've got one like AAA cutting and the rest are kind of in between. These cuttings here, you may have seen them before. I, I don't even know if you've seen them before at this point, but these are for my mum for a variegated monster plant that I'm gonna build for her. So I'm going to take these cuttings out of here. I'm going to put it into the a little bit shitter pot from the chooser down there. And I'm going to space them out around the moss pole, which is, I think it's a meter tall. Space them out around here, attach them on and let them grow. And when the plant grows in, gets bigger, and I need to upgrade the pots or whatever, I will do so. It'll be very easy because it's gonna be in liquor. And before I give it to my mum at around Christmas time or a little bit before, I'm gonna ask her what pot she wants. But I wanted to get an extra big moss pole so that obviously the monstera is gonna stick to this like glue. So I wanted to make sure I just got something big enough for her to have. I don't know if she'll ever want a plant bigger than a meter tall. I don't know if she does, then we'll I'll work that out with her and we'll have to repot it. If she doesn't, then I guess she could sell cuttings. But but that's why I've chosen a, to be honest, a moss pole that is very, very large because I want these to stick to the pole and kind of just stay there. So when I repot it, I'm essentially lifting out the pole and everything's gonna be stuck to it and I just dunk it into new Lekka in a bigger pot and everything else. So that's why I'm doing that. So of course they've been sat in Lekka in water. Have to get them out, see how far the water's up. Oh, it's up a little bit high there, but it'll be okay. Okay. What have we got? Anything rotting? Yes, I have a bit of rot. In full disclosure, this can happen. It has happened. Not ideal. Let's go through the rotting root. Oh, we've got a few. Okay. So that wasn't expected. I suspect that's because the water level's been too high, but the pot I've had it in sits almost flush to the walls of this pot. Um, so I couldn't necessarily tell how high the water level was. So I'm now gonna have to cut some of these roots away because they're a little bit fucked actually. In fact, they're very fucked. I'm gonna cut this off. I can smell the rot anyway. So in case anybody thought I was immune from problems like this, I'm not, I'm really not. I parted this, I left, I came back. I've just checked it and now it's a bit fucked. It'll be okay though. These things will come back fine. That's gone as well. Jesus Christ, all the roots on this one are gone. Not all of them are like that. I think it's only some, we'll see. So that's back to square one. So that's not great. Let's pull out another one. Like so. Again, I'm not worried, It's it'll be okay. Honestly, well, the node's healthy, everything's healthy, it's just the root. These seem fine. Oh no, they're not, they're coming off too, holy shit. Yeah, these roots have just been dunked in too much water. They should have been further up in the lecker, and that's that's my bad, really. It doesn't smell great though. If you've smelt rot before, it's, it's not the sexiest thing you'll ever smell, I'll tell you that much. It's always better to get all the rot off, even if that means losing more roots, by the way, guys. Don't be afraid. If it's squishy, mushy, get rid of it. Don't just try and hold on to it, it's not worth it. You're creating more damage by doing it. So I'm not saying do exactly what I'm doing right now because I should probably be feeling a little bit more carefully and choosing what to cut. But generally speaking, if you've got rot, don't be a hero, don't leave it, just get rid of it. You can always grow new roots, you'll be all right. Uh, all of them rotted? <laughs> I don't even know. Let's have a look. Oh, these are like fused together. Oh no, it's the same plant. Oh, oh, I thought they were two cuttings, they aren't. Right, let's have a look at this one. This one isn't as bad. It's got some calluses there for roots. It's not that bad, that one. I can see a little bit of, I don't think it's full on rot, but it's questionable. So what I'm gonna do, given that there is roots coming out, you might not be able to see this, but given there are roots coming out of this node here and this node here, I'm actually gonna cut the two nodes down the middle so that if anything happens, I might delay the rot 
to, you know, cross the threshold of this node and go to this node. So I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm not really going to disturb the root. I'm just going to separate them in case something has gone wrong with that node and I don't know it yet. And it's just going to, you know, just go kaput. It's just one of the perils of rooting Monstera. I shouldn't have put it that far down into the water. I didn't even realize it was that far down. Got a little bit of root in here. I'm going to try and remove it like so. Ew, ew. And then I will get to another question as soon as I've uh, completed damage control. Again, this is probably a super long report if you haven't already worked this out. As usual, I get a lot of questions about my shop each week. And I know y'all are really curious about that. The question I mainly got asked this week was, do you have any crazy customer stories? And honestly, honestly, the short answer to that, guys, is absolutely. I've got it all. I've had it all. I don't think it's necessarily right to talk about certain things in certain ways on here because I, I have my own business. I take my customers very seriously and all the rest. So I, I can't just be like, you know, I, I can't go fully into every situation or anything. So I'm not going to do that because I don't think it's really becoming. But I've had everything from, what have I had? I've been blackmailed a few times. I've had people threaten to, was it sue me for stuff? I've had, what else have I had? People smash up plans to get free shit. That's a very popular one. Loving that. Not. That happens a lot. Uh, what else? I've had, okay, the main thing I get actually, and this is just fucking great. I've had a lot of people telling me that my plants are very expensive and extortionate, you know, like hate mails, telling me, you know, I'm ripoff merchant and they buy my plants. And a lot of them have started up plant shops since doing this. And they're selling my stock in their plant shops for more money than mine. I'm not gonna rat anybody out, obviously, but you've got to laugh at that. You've got to laugh at that. I mean, I, I mean, what is your business model? I, I've got to know. I think we all want to know what what part of that business model for you makes sense, really, because now you've still got to compete with my insanely high prices to sell your plants that are my plants that I sold to you and now you're selling them on. But yeah, I've had all manner of customers. I, I think a lot of customers feel like it's okay to um, personally attack me if orders have not arrived correctly or things like that. Like, for example, recently we've had some plants literally, and I mean literally, cooked in the mail. Like, there was somebody that opened up a plant last week, I saw the email, and they were basically like, they were very nice to me, not shitting on the customer, they were very nice to me, and they were like, yo, hi, just want to let you know, I don't think this plant has arrived very well. I mean, that was an understatement. <laughs> I saw the image of the plant and there was nothing left. It was this brown, crispy thing. And I think what's happened is on this occasion, because it was so hot when I was shipping some of these out, whatever's happened, the, bean, the boxes have been inside the courier's vans, right? So DPD in my case. And they've just sat there for like an afternoon in that searing heat. You know, when you leave a car in the sun, that kind of heat. So a lot of my packages have been cooked. And for some reason, it's like, I don't know if some customers obviously know that I wouldn't send out the plant like that, but they take the opportunity to personally tag me on Instagram and call me out for being like a bad person. And I'm like, what one thing's first? Attacking me personally and attacking my business are two totally separate things. So you shouldn't be doing that. But second of all, what makes you think I would send something out like that? Honestly, really? Do you really think if I sent plants out like that in that state, that nobody wouldn't be talking about it all the time. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I understand that it's frustrating. You, you know, there's a plant that you really want and it doesn't arrive well. And I, I can't give you another one because they're rare plants. I don't necessarily have a, you know, a replacement for you. I get that that can be shit, but there's really no need to go on a bit of a spree and tag me in things and, and attack me when I, 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 I'm honestly, if I could give you replacements, I would. Do you know what I mean? That happens a lot. I get a lot of hate after every single launch, generally. A lot of hate from customers that have missed out on plants. And I think the last launch I did, a few people came back over onto whatever video I put out the day of the launch and had a go at me for, you know, selling five plants and no wonder they're all sold out and all this kind of stuff. Um, they had a go at me and I was just like, I put up as many plants as I could, but they've just sold out. Everyone wants them. I can't, I can't put up 500 plants. 
Do you know what I mean? And even if I did put up 500 plants, I saw the amount of traffic on my website that day, it wouldn't have covered it. Do you know what I'm saying? But this is it. This is the whole rare plant thing. This is this is kind of how it goes, right? It's not just my shop. Other shops will go through this as well. I'm sure other shops that may or may not be watching this will agree. You get hate mail after every launch because, you know, things sell out. Do you know what I mean? And it's, I'm trying. I'm really, really trying, guys. I promise you I'm trying to bring you as many plants as I can. Different things, cool things, big things, small things. Just, I'm trying really hard to bring you what I can and I, I don't understand some people's mindsets sometimes. I really don't. I got attacked very recently for having terrible customer service because somebody was paying for a plant and it, it got removed from the cart when they check out, um, which I know a lot of you have had that problem. Um, I'll start by saying that's not me doing that. That's the e-commerce provider that I use does that. I can't stop that, guys. I cannot stop that. I cannot put reserves on baskets when you go to the checkout. If if I could, I would. Do you know what I mean? I cannot do that. I'm literally bound at the mercy of my website. Um, I'm trying to look into other providers to fix it. We'll see how it goes to, you know, to change how that works, to, to relieve you of that problem. But for now, I can't do anything about it. But it's it's like I'm not sat here taking out things from people's fucking baskets, laughing about it. Do you know what I mean? Just some people are just so quick to, to just assume the worst. And I, I don't really get why. I get it. You, you didn't get the plant you wanted. I do feel for you. I've been there myself in the past when I used to buy from launches like this. It does suck. Of course it sucks. But... I can't, I, I cannot do anything more, you know? I cannot, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's tough. I know it's frustrating, but these are rare plants. I, I can't provide, you know, what a Dutch grower could provide of some other plant. I can't do that. Supply will never meet demand, you know? So unfortunately, this is the game. This is the rare plant game. And I, I do sympathize, don't get me wrong, I really do. I mean, blackmailing me, I don't sympathize with. Thank you very fucking much. But yeah, most of the time it's, I can tell people's comments are out of frustration for not getting a plant that they want, whether that's something that was due in and now isn't coming in or something like that. I, I do understand people's frustrations, so I'm not, you know, devaluing how they feel about that. But I think some people don't necessarily handle it in, in a nice way, basically. Right, I don't know how I'm going to plant these. This is actually quite difficult. I don't know how I want to do this. Sorry if you can't see this, but this is actually very, very difficult. I might actually preliminary attach these on because I think it's going to help me plant it because I will never be able to hold all these plants in place and plant it at the same time. So I'm going to do that real quick. So yeah, while I can't really go into specifics, I, I do get, I don't want to say crazy customers, although I have had those two. Um, I do get a lot of stuff, but it's just... What you gotta deal with when you own a shop. You know, you gotta take it, you gotta run with it, you gotta be polite, even if they're not being polite. And uh, that's just what you gotta do. One thing that will forever get to me, um, it borderline hurts me, is when customers pretend that they haven't had responses from me, from the shop, and they spout off a bunch of stuff, like on Instagram or something, and then they'll be like, oh, I'll let you know when I receive a response, even though, We've been responding to them and they've been talking back to us, but they never publish it. I've noticed a lot of people just choose to leave things on like a bad note. And I think, I think, I think that it's to cause a little bit of tea, a little bit of shit. I really do. I really do. It feels like that. If it's not that, it feels like that. Do you know what I mean? Um, because why wouldn't you just say, oh yeah, you know, this was solved. I don't understand why a lot of people do that. I, I have my theories, as I've just mentioned, but I'll never understand some things. That did not, not stay on. Let's try this again. But yeah, there's been numerous uh, incidents where people have acted like they are not in contact with us. As a business owner, I can't come out and say anything on that, right? I can't go, you know, you're wrong, because then I look really unprofessional and I look, I mean, in some cases, you could say that if I spoke out about anybody, due to my size and my following, I'm a bully. So in a lot of situations, some people, not every customer, but some people say things, and although it is very fucking false, you've kind of got to let them say it. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't do anything about it and it's shit. And it's something I'm having to learn to accept, but there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to let them do it. You know, it sucks. It really sucks. I'm learning, I'm getting better at that anyway. Um, it is what it is. 
But things are not always as they seem, I think, is the main takeaway from that. Why does this look shit, guys? Honestly, why? I'd love to know why. This is temporary, by the way, until I planted this just to fix where I want things to go. So I know you probably can't see anything, but honestly, this is quite a difficult job. Some people have asked me about Patreon. You know, why don't you start a Patreon so we can support you? Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't know how I feel about Patreons yet, especially during the time that we're in, right? I do not support the idea of anybody having a Patreon where they do not need any income um, and taking it from people that also are struggling. I didn't even want, to, uh, people have asked me about Patreons all the time, by the way, but I don't even wanna think about it or even really talk about it until COVID just fucks off. Um, even then, it's not really something that I'm about. Like, I, I, don't know, I don't know what it is. I'm not saying that people that have a Patreon are like the worst people in the world. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying for me personally, with my work ethic, I don't know how I feel. I need some time to mull that over. The main thing about a Patreon is I couldn't offer you anything in return because I don't have time to do, you know, like shout outs, extra content, stuff like that. Like I don't, I, I don't feel like I can offer you guys anything that I don't already offer you. So for me, two seconds, loud as fuck. For me, I feel like it's not, like I, I'm just taking, I'm not giving anything back. Like obviously I have the shop, but I'm giving a product and a service in return for that. I have a channel, but I'm making videos and content in exchange for that, you know? And that's not even you guys giving me money, that's ad revenue, which by the way, I don't know why people think that I'm making loads of it. I don't know where you're getting this info from, but I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Patreon. If you don't know what a Patreon is, it's kind of like a like a website where you can subscribe to it and you donate a certain amount of money per month and there's different tiers and based on those different tiers of what you donate, you get different kind of rewards or perks back. So there might be a $1 tier a month, then a $5 and then a $10 or whatever else. Um, and your favorite creator may or may not have one. Um, but I, I don't know. Let me know what you think about any of this in the comments because I'm actually kind of curious to see people's opinions on Patreons because as I say, I'm just so undecided. But let me know what you think. I think I'd rather just hear what other people think on that, to be honest. I'm nearly done. This is all totally clean lecker, by the way. I have pre-cleaned it. That's why I'm kind of going into a random bag. Right, that there is in lecker. Now then. All right, so now that I've got this kind of in here, it's now time to try, try, and stake this up a little bit. So I'm gonna start with this one. I don't know what I wanna do with that. I could do the same with all three, you know. Let's do all three of these petioles upwards. So that's that tied around there. There is this leaf here and I, I, it's not gonna go up, I don't think. Maybe it will, you know. I don't really wanna force these things. I can do it loosely and try and train it to go upwards. Again, behind that petiole, because I know that a leaf will come out of it. Anyone that wants to do this, I advise you to have a drink beforehand because this could get very difficult very quickly. Right, so that's there. I think, I think that is it planted. If I just put it there, obviously it's a bit grimy, but that is the front, what I intend to be the front of the plant. So you have uh, this leaf here. I think you've got that one there. And then this one here that you can't see, that's actually two separate leaves. Then if I scoot it around a little bit more, you've got leaves a little bit more speckling, would you say? Again, through the back, not quite as much. I might find that when I transport this to a bigger pot, I might add another cutting, you know, round, round the back or something like that. We'll see how these go. If I find that this ends up too green in a couple of months, I will take from my own plant and I don't cut my own plant for anybody, but I will cut it for my mum. Um, and I will put some higher quality variegated cuttings in. She did seem that she was happy with these cuttings, but let's just see what happens because I don't really want this cutting to die. It's been through the wars, but we'll see. So that there, although it might look a bit, you know, random, that there is my variegated Monstera that I'm planning for my mum. And I think that's it for this video. Um, please leave any comments that you'd like. If you like this video, then please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please hit that subscribe button. I will give you all the updates you'll ever want on this. Don't you worry. Same thing for all the other plants. And I think until next time, I will see you next week. Bye guys.